welcome to Bible Stories with Rosie. My name is Isabella Jane, and we have had so much fun doing these Bible stories for you guys every week. Yeah, we have Bella. Yes, Rosie. What story are we doing today? Well, we're going to be looking in the book of Daniel. So, Rosie, can you guess who our main character today is? Uh, 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 can I have a clue? Well, it's in the book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel. Yes, I heard. Uh, Rosie, our main character is in fact Daniel. Well, isn't that funny? He even got a book named after him. <laughs> so this story is a very famous story, Rosie, called Daniel in the Lion's Den. <gasps> In the lion's den. Sounds like a scary uh, business deal or something. Well, perhaps, but how about we read the story and see what it's really about? Yes, I think we should do that. So it started with our amazing character Daniel. He was uh, an incredible man of God who prayed three times a day. He had so much faith and trust in God. That's amazing! Yeah, but Rosie, the king of the time, he actually made a law saying that for 30 days you cannot worship anyone or pray to anyone besides this king. That's not nice. This king was full of himself. Yeah, I think he was. Do you know what Daniel's response was to this? I don't know. Did he follow the rules? No, Rosie. This was a rule that Daniel was prepared to break. You see, our main character, our guy, Daniel, was a law-abiding, really cool, good, good guy. But when this came along, he completely rebelled and went home and prayed. Just like he usually did. He prayed to his God, our God. He prayed to God. Oh, oh no! Did, did he get in trouble? Well, he did. You see, the little clause at the end of that law was, if you did pray to or worship anyone else, you would be thrown in the lion's den. And I don't mean that in a figurative sense. You would literally be thrown into a den of lions. What? That's so scary. I don't want to ever be thrown into a den of lions. I think they'd treat me like a chew toy because I look like one. Don't I? So Rosie, because Daniel was praying to his own God, he was actually caught and he was thrown into the lion's den. <gasps> so our main character dies this soon in the story? No Rosie, he didn't die. Hold on, we're getting there, we're getting there. Hold on. As he was put into the den, the king actually says, May the God that you serve continuously rescue you. Okay, and, and did God rescue Daniel? Well that night the king couldn't actually sleep and he fasted and he was, he was concerned. But, but he was the one who threw Daniel into the den. Why would he be concerned? Well I think his heart may have been changing. You see the next day the king rushed to the den to see if Daniel was alive or not. And guess what? Daniel was alive? Yep, Daniel was alive, and the king could not believe his eyes, and Daniel said, praise my God forever, because God, Rosie, had shut the lion's mouths so that they couldn't hurt Daniel. That's amazing. And, and, and did the king change? Well, in fact, this is what the king then said. Peace be multiplied to you. I now command that every part of my kingdom Tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, unchanging forever, and his kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his power shall continue to the end. That's amazing. It was a complete turnaround. Rosie, I think that saying God works in mysterious ways is true. I think so too, because it shows that God can change anyone's heart. He is so powerful. That's right. Rejoice, rejoice. Let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice. All church of Christ rejoice. Rejoice.
few years ago, I went on a trip to Europe all by myself for just over three weeks. I had the most amazing time. It was so much fun. I saw incredible places, ate some amazing food. Mm. But what I loved most about this time and what I wrote about most in this journal is just all the different people I came across. I loved hearing all the different languages around me, Spanish, French, Hungarian, and I just loved seeing how different people lived. How about you? Have you ever traveled and come across people from different cultures? And I'm sure you guys have met people who maybe have a different culture or language from you right here in South Africa. We are so privileged to live in such a diverse country. But I'm sure you all also know it isn't always easy to love and enjoy people who are different from us. In fact, on my trip in Europe, I visited a city in Germany, Berlin, and there I saw something that just made me realize how we as people always tend to separate ourselves from people who are different from us. I saw the ruins of the Berlin Wall, and this wall was put up just after World War II, when Germany was split uh, between the East and the West, and it separated people for over 20 years. And not long before we went into lockdown, some of you even told me quite sad stories here at church of how your classmates would tease the Asian children in your class because they were scared they might get the coronavirus. That is not God's plan for us, and we don't even have to always put up an actual wall to keep us separate from other people. Sometimes our unkind words and actions do this. Now today we're going to be talking about diversity and how it was God's plan to make us all different and that it is good. And we'll see how Jesus died so that all kinds of different people can love and enjoy each other forever. People of different races and different cultures fighting and not getting along is really nothing, nothing new. Let's rewind a little. We're going to go back to about 60 years after Jesus was born. This is about 1,900 years ago. Paul, the guy we've learned about so much in this series, wrote a letter to a church in the city of Ephesus. We can find this letter in our Bibles in the New Testament. It's called the Book of Ephesians. Now in this church, two groups of people were not getting along at all. And these two groups were called the Jews, or the Israelites, and the non-Jews, or the Gentiles. That's how they were divided into t these two groups. Now, they were quite different. They wore different clothes, they ate different food, they had all sorts of different ceremonies and traditions, and their differences kept them separated from one another. Long before this, the Jewish people were chosen by God to be a part of his family. He gave them his law and taught them how to be holy, how to live as people who belong to God. He wanted them to look different from the rest of the nations so that everyone would look at them and see that they worship and love and know the one true God. Now God didn't choose them because they were special or because they did everything right. No, he chose them because he wanted to. And God promised that all nations would be blessed through the Israelites. So he chose to use the Jewish people to make himself known to people across the whole entire world. And God told them to love people who were different from them. But they didn't get this right. They didn't always get along well with people who were not Jewish. They forgot that God loved them just because he loved them and, and somehow thought the law, by obeying the law, it made them better from the Gentiles. In the temple, so it's like the church building in Paul's time, there was even a wall that kept the Gentiles outside. So they could look at the temple and see it, but they could never enter into it. Now guys, the truth is, although the Jewish people and the non-Jews were very different, they were also the same in very big ways. And it's the same with us. 
We might speak different languages, have a different color skin, we might come from different countries, but we are all the same in at least three ways. This is what we all have in common. We are all made by God. We are all created in his image. And that means that we are all valuable. We all matter to God. The second way that we are all the same is we are all sinners. No matter the color of our skin or the language we speak or where we were born, the food we eat, we all have sin that separates us from God. Even the Jewish people who knew God's law were sinful because they couldn't keep God's law perfectly. And guys, this is the problem. This is the real problem that keeps us from loving people, not the ways that we are all different. Because of our sin, we have a broken relationship with God and we can't love him properly. And that also means that we can't love other people properly. We have a broken relationship with others. Now, the third way that we are all the same is that because of our sin, we all are in need of a rescuer. We all need someone to fix our relationship first with God and then to fix our relationship with other people. When Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, he explained that this is exactly what Jesus came to do. So let's read together from Ephesians 2, and we're going to read verses 13 to 16. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. So Paul here is reminding the non-Jews that they were once far away from God. Their sin separated them from him. But because of Jesus' death on the cross and because they trusted in him, their sin could be forgiven and they could be brought near to God. And it's the same with us. If we trust in Jesus, our sin is forgiven and we can come close to God and have a relationship with him forever. But then Paul goes on to say that Jesus is the reason that the Jews and the Gentiles can now have peace with one another. Jesus removed everything that divided them. So all the traditions and all the ceremonies, everything that kept them separated was now taken away because of Jesus. So Jews and non-Jews, South Africans and Nigerians and Chinese and people of all races and all cultures can become part of one family if they trust in Jesus. So we all keep our own cultures and languages, but everyone who trusts in Jesus belongs to God's big family. And it's not because of our skin color or our nationality that we are accepted by God. It is just by trusting in Jesus. Through trusting in Jesus, everyone can come to God equally and love and enjoy each other. Everyone who trusts in him receives the Holy Spirit. He is God with us and he is the same for us all. And the Holy Spirit helps us to get along with other people, to love them and enjoy them and appreciate them, even if they are very, very different from us. In Revelation 7 verse 9, that's the very last book of the Bible. We read there that having a big, diverse family is part of God's good plan for us. We read there that one day when Jesus returns, people of every nation, of every tribe and every tongue will all worship him together and love and enjoy one another forever. But we don't have to wait all the way until then before we love and enjoy people who are different from us and maybe have a different culture or language or background. With God's help, we can do that today. As we trust in Jesus and as the Holy Spirit works in our lives to change our hearts, we can do three things. 
And these are three L words that I want you all to remember. So those words are listen, learn, and look. Listen to other people. Listen well to try and understand them. Listen to their stories to hear where they come from and what they've experienced. Learn as much as you can from people who are different from you. Learn about other cultures and other countries, other languages. This is how we learn to appreciate one another. And thirdly, look. Look out for people who are different from you and look for ways to become their friends. Look for ways that you can spend time with people who maybe speak a different language or come from a different culture. But also look out for the ways that you are similar. Look for all the ways that other people reflect God's image. Look for the ways that they are valuable and special. By trusting in Jesus, we really can love and enjoy all kinds of people, and it's really exciting. But it's not just so we can enjoy that or so that we can make others feel loved. We also do this so that the world, people who don't know Jesus, can see how we, as God's people, live differently. When they see how we love all kinds of different people, they might stop to wonder how it is possible. Imagine in a world where people normally put up walls and try and stay separate from those who are different from them, that we show how God loves everyone and how Jesus really changes our lives. Imagine other people decide to trust and follow Jesus because of the way that we love all kinds of people.